Hi guys, thanks for joining me. I want to do a little bit of research today and look at the chart of Jesus. And I was looking at a couple of things online and I typed into Google here, when is Jesus coming back? So obviously referring to the second coming, the rapture, and Google has come up with an answer for me straight away. It says that how will we know when Jesus comes back? Jesus Christ is coming back to this earth very soon, apparently, to this uh, website. Now, Jesus himself made it crystal clear that we cannot know the date of his return. He stated in Matthew 24, 36, Of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. So it's very unlikely that I can predict when the second coming will occur by looking at Jesus' natal chart, his progress chart and his transits, but I think it will be fun to have a look anyway and see if I can come up with anything. So I've got the birth chart info here. I've gone to Astro Theme and looked at the details and his birth information here is listed as being the 28th of February, 7 BC at 3.34 in the morning according to the Julian calendar and that's in Bethlehem, Israel. That's what his chart is going to look like. And his time of birth is an assumption given by this website from Jill Roy. So Jill Roy did some research into this area and he's come up with this birth information as being the 28th of February instead of the 24th of December in the year zero. So I'm going to look at this information i'm going to use the information to look at the chart and i've actually drawn up the chart here in my astrology software so this is what jesus's chart looks like now the wheel here is the kind of framework of any chart and if i'm looking up your chart it will be within a wheel like this so to draw up a natal chart all i need is the date of birth the time of birth and the place of birth. And what that does is it gives me a snapshot of the sky at that moment. So this chart is someone standing in Bethlehem at 3.34 in the morning on the 28th of February in the year 7 BC, looking up at the sky. And this is what the sky looked like right then. So this is the snapshot of that. It's split up into 12 chunks, the 12 houses here. And that's what the sky is. And that is a is a moment in time that will always look that way. If I put in your birth info here, I will have a different picture. The, the sky will look different. And that's really important in terms of what you come into this lifetime with, what your aptitudes are, what your challenges are, what you're going to be working on, what your life purpose is, what your vocational aptitudes are. It's really, really has a huge uh, significance in what you're going to experience on this planet and it's a blueprint of the soul so we're looking at an exceptional chart here and because i mean that's an understatement and because it is an exceptional chart already i'm seeing certain things which are very rare and exceptional which i'd expect to see in this chart so first of all we have a mystic rectangle here this big blue rectangle and that's something that you don't see very often it's very rare and it indicates someone who's exceptional, who's um, a mystic, someone who has huge, unique talent. And then we have this grand trine within this mystic rectangle. And a grand trine is uh, less rare, but still it indicates great talent and great skill. So that's something I would expect to see, something really unique. And then what I look at are the elements here. And the elements are fire, earth, air, and water. And in astrology, each sign of the zodiac is associated with an element. So you've got Pisces here, that's water. You've got Aries, that's fire. You've got Taurus and Virgo, that's associated with earth. And what's interesting is that in this chart, we have no fire. And fire has to do with life purpose, passion, um, drive, talent, excitement, enthusiasm. In the tarot, fire is the suit of wands and it has to do with life purpose and what's so interesting is that in the chart of jesus who was all about fire and all about purpose there's absolutely no fire here and the way i would interpret that is that his passion and his purpose didn't come from planet earth and his circumstances it came from 
a higher force um, that's spiritual it came from god so that immediately kind of gives me food for thought and that's why doing things like this is so interesting to me so let's look at some of the basics here first of all this line here on the left hand side this is the rising sign the ascendant it's in the sign of capricorn and the ascendant is the sign of the zodiac that was coming up over the horizon at the moment this person was born so on the horizon at 3 34 in the morning capricorn was sitting on the horizon and the rising sign represents the person's default setting what they're naturally like what they will revert to and if they have to make a quick decision how they will react capricorn is very grounded it's hard working it's diligent it's very focused on achieving something and certainly jesus being a carpenter by trade someone who worked hard, someone who had a huge mission, a huge purpose. And by the way, all of the things, all of the examples here I'm going to mention are going to be understatements because this is the Son of God. So if when I say that this man had a huge purpose coming to planet Earth, that's an understatement. So just kind of bear that in mind while I'm doing this chart. Now, Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, which makes the chart ruler Saturn. And this whole chart, everything is influenced by the power of Saturn. Now, Saturn is this planet sitting in Pisces at 11 degrees in the second house. 11 degrees is the master number of service. And it's the master number I would associate with Jesus. It's doing things for other people. It's being of service to others and being completely selfless. Saturn is security and structure in Pisces. That security and structure coming from spiritual connection. Realizing the truth and the real security is in the connection with God, the higher power. And that's where he got his strength from. The sun is the center of the solar system. It is the most important heavenly body. And in astrology, it has similar importance. The sun is really the center of everything. It's the personality. It's what strengthens you. It's what identifies you. Again, the sun in Pisces here really shows that Jesus's identity was all about spirituality, faith, getting creative with faith, the number seven there. And really in the second house, the second house is practical matters. It's um, life on planet Earth. It's career. It's finance. It's all of the things that are very tangible and very visible. So you can see that most of the action is happening here in the second house. So you brought all of this faith, one, two, three, four, five planets in Pisces into this physical, practical dimension um, and shared that with the world. So again, that's really, it's interesting because I, I didn't exactly know what I'd expect to see, but now that I see it, it makes sense. What else have we got? We've got the moon in Aquarius. The moon is what the person is nurtured by. It's what makes them feel comfortable. And the moon is in Aquarius here. So this person, Jesus, was nurtured by and got a sense of peace and uh, fulfillment and like he'd done the right thing by being of service to other people. Aquarius is the sign of the humanitarian being there for others. So this is someone who felt a sense of fulfillment through teaching others by being a humanitarian, by sharing spiritual principles. It's interesting, you wouldn't really think of Jesus as needing or, you know, needing a sense of fulfillment or like a job well done. But that's what this says. We've got Uranus, that's the rebel. Again, rebellion around religion, spiritual principles, implementing new ideas. Jupiter is growth. In traditional astrology, it rules Pisces, so spirituality very much at ease, very much a part of the personality, and really something that is central to the personality and that structures it. Venus, the planet of love and beauty, also in Pisces, this desire, this love for spirit, whichever way you, you roll it, you know, whether he was the son of God or whether he was just a normal man who had become enlightened and found a love for spirit, Either way, that is really fitting and appropriate there. And then we've got the midheaven. The midheaven is an indicator of vocational aptitudes. With the midheaven in Scorpio, this is someone who's a healer. And we know by the miracles that certainly this is something Jesus did. And here we've got Neptune, the planet of dreams and aspirations, also in Scorpio, spiritual healing, faith healing. 
Now, the South Node and the North Node is interesting because that looks at past lives and uh, reincarnation and purpose for this lifetime. So the Midheaven is a great indicator of what that person is going to be good at when it comes to career and jobs and, and work. The South and North Node has to do with life purpose and what you're trying to achieve. So sometimes the two are one and the same. So let's say a person is uh, looking to be a teacher and to work with children in a working sense. That can be um, achieved and completed by that person working in a school, for instance. And sometimes the South and North Node echo that and say this person is meant to be around children and have a family and that's the way they're going to progress spiritually and then it's the same but other times you know people will work as an IT specialist and their sole purpose will be to create a soulmate relationship with another person and to grow through that so sometimes they're the same sometimes they're different in this case we've got the person being a healer, a faith healer, spiritual healer, the south node indicates that Jesus had lived a past life before, that he had been to planet earth before, and had been a healer already. Now, when I read the Bible, I didn't read it, I listened to it as an audio book actually, um, and there were parts in the Bible where uh, there was discussion about Jesus coming back, being a reincarnation of someone else, especially a reincarnation of Elijah, if I remember correctly. So there was talk of him being here before, and that certainly is echoed in this chart. So according to the astrology here, there's a strong indicator that this wasn't Jesus' first time to planet Earth. And the North Node says that what he was trying to achieve was to create a practical brotherhood of man, a uh, uh, the human family, um, people, individuals as part of one great whole. And certainly, I mean, without getting into the theology of it, you know, what he did in terms of his sacrifice and bringing humanity together as one family. And I know we can argue about the effects of religion and all of that stuff. But according to this chart, the purpose, the goal was to bring people together in a practical sense and to create this family to create this this coming together of all people all walks of life black moon lilith is the part of the chart that is repressed and the part that is dark and that causes problems now jesus is said to be a perfect person so this may or may not be relevant if jesus did repress anything he would have repressed the urge or the sense to be self-focused and based on his own will, his own desires. Obviously, he did the will of the Lord when, when he um, discovered that he was going to be crucified, and he prayed and he said, God, do I really have to do this? Can I get out of this? That was the only time really when I noticed anything that was anything like kind of self-preservation. But then in the end, he, he got the message that he did have to go through it, and he did it. So he totally sacrificed himself, and he didn't do anything selfishly. I mean, he could have run away. He could have said, I'm not doing this, but he did the will of the Father. And also, the other thing that comes to mind with this here is that when he went into the temple and he flipped the tables and he says, you're not going to do business in this house of the Lord, that was anger, that was willfulness. But really, Jesus, as a perfect person or as an individual, you certainly wouldn't label him as a narcissist or being selfish. You'd be much more focused on the selflessness, the acts of healing, the miracles, the faith, the spirituality, all of that stuff. Okay, so I could go on forever with this chart. I could really look at uh, Mercury in detail, look at these two up here in the eighth house. Um, I just want to focus on the... Um, yeah, and also I could look at the mystic rectangle, which really combines all of these different factors, all of these different gifts, and brings them together in a way that works very well. And one gift and talent flows into the next. When you have a grand cross in the chart, so four squares, so I'm sorry, I'm getting a bit technical here. A trine is an angle when two planets, so we've got Pluto and the North Node here, they are 
120 degrees apart, and that's this blue line, okay? You can also have a square, which is this line, which means that two planets, the North Node and Mercury in this case, are 90 degrees apart. You can have a grand cross, you can have a square, a square, a square, and a square, and that creates um, this big red square in the sky, and that can create someone who's very energized, but who kind of becomes overwhelmed and can't integrate all of their talents and skills together. That is the opposite of this, the mystic rectangle, where there are different gifts and skills that all flow nicely into each other. Um, but I want to focus here on the grand trine, which is these three trines creating this big blue triangle. And that's an area of talent. And in, in the case of Jesus, we've got the rising sign in Capricorn, combining with Pluto in Virgo, and the North Node in Taurus. So it was Jesus' gift to take the unmanifest and to make it practical and to bring it into planet Earth and through his own power to transform spirituality and faith, create a whole new religion and to create this whole new family of people, how they interact, treat, you know, do unto your neighbor as you would treat yourself. All of these things that he did, the... Um, transformation of spiritual beliefs, the way people connected with the higher power, faith, all of that stuff, the teachings, that was done through his personal power and he could create that in the physical manifest earthly world. And that is the gift here. Again, understatement of the century, but that in the astrology is captured. So let's have a look at uh, the progress chart and the tr and the transits now to look at what potentially could be coming up in future. And again, remember that I'm looking at uh, the future now based on Jesus's past incarnation and also on this birth information that I've chosen to use. If I had chosen the 24th of December, it would look totally different. So this inner wheel, we have the birth chart, what I've just been looking at, that's in here. The progress chart is now this middle wheel and the transits are what's going on in the heavens right now on the 12th of October 2016 at 22.11. What's happening in the sky right now and how that impacts and how that affects the birth chart of Jesus. So the progress chart is an artificial construct. What that does is it takes the natal chart and it speeds it up by one degree for every year this person has been alive. So we are fast forwarding this life by 2000 and something years. So this is sped up by 2000 and something degrees. And then the transits are what's going on right now and how that impacts. Okay, so very briefly, in the progress chart, you look at the personal planets. In the transits, you look at the outer planets. You can see that most of the personal planets are around this eighth house seventh house part of the chart and really what that says to me is that there's a bigger focus on kind of um, the institution of humanity and that there's more focus on that now and that is an indicator that Jesus as a spirit as an energy per se and again this doesn't really um, it only resonates with me in the sense that his consciousness is becoming more focused on humanity rather than less focused. So that doesn't say a great deal, but it says that it's more likely that there is a second coming, second coming rather than there not being a second coming. Now, in terms of the transits, and on this side, I can speed up the chart by months. You can see the planets moving there, or I can speed it up by years. Okay, so the first thing that you could argue is, and I look at the big planets here, I look at Jupiter, I look at Saturn, Pluto, Neptune, and Uranus. So the first thing here is that Pluto went from the 12th house into the first house in Capricorn sometime in 2000, and let's see, let's do it by months. So Pluto jumped over the rising sign in February 2014. And you could argue that Pluto, the planet of transformation going into Capricorn, means that something could happen. That the 
unmanifest be could become transformed into something physical in February 2014. Now, we were around in 2014 and there was no rapture. So that would have been a faulty interpretation. But I could see that as Oh, you know, Pluto changes, so things become transformed, things become manifest. Now, Pluto stays in that first house for a number of years. It moves very, very slowly. Pluto is the furthest from the Earth, and it has the slowest kind of movement, and it stays now in that first house until 2037. So do you see why it could be significant that Pluto jumps from one house to the other in February 2014 because it then stays in that sector for 23 years. So any kind of jump from one house to the other would be significant. So if I'd said Jesus is coming back in February 2014, I would have been wrong. Um, Saturn is the next thing. Saturn moves quicker. As you can see, Saturn kind of hops around here. And Saturn is going through the 10th, 11th and 12th house over the next over this year and the next couple of years and Saturn moves into the first house of self in January 2019. So again there's potential for something to become manifest plus it joins Pluto there so there's potential for the physical the tangible to be transformed and become more solid and structured. Jupiter is not going to be so relevant here because it moves very quickly. Um, and Jupiter is growth and good luck and good fortune. And you can see it zips around the chart. This is the quicker, quickest of the outer planets. And I would say the only time it's really relevant here for what I'm looking at is when it joins these other big, big players here. And it does that in April 2020 when it joins Pluto and Saturn and the personal planet Mars in the first house. Now, the Jupiter-Saturn connection, these two joining each other, that's quite rare. That happens once every 20 years. It's called the Grand Conjunction. But with Pluto on top of them, that's even more rare. So there's something significant going on here in 2020 with these three coming together. And there's real potential for something big, 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 big to change. You know looking beyond this this kind of video of Jesus and and the second coming whether Jesus comes or not in April 2020 there will be a huge shift to way to the ways we work to the way we interact and communicate as a human family as individuals as the globe and that is going to have a huge impact I'm, I I need to make a video on this by itself in earnest because that's going to be a huge event and I mean if we're looking at this it could very well be that this is when it happens because something big is certainly going to happen now we've got Neptune in the second Neptune is dream and aspiration the second is the real world and Neptune sits in that sector until ah, there we go it moves over um, until May 2024 so Neptune would argue that nothing is going to materialize until 2024. So that kind of puts a, puts a line through that big, great conjunction here, including Pluto, because it says everything is going to be dreamlike and nebulous in this sense until 2024. So forget it until then. And then finally, we've got Uranus. In the fourth here, causing unexpected things and unexpected things in the sense of family and the way people interact and what Jesus' purpose was when he was alive. So that's difficult to assign a meaning to because it's anything could happen. But Uranus sits on top of his progressed Saturn in 2025 here well when exactly in june 2026 two degrees two degrees mm, that could be significant although personally it doesn't really speak to me that much let's move up a couple of years let's zoom ahead now into the 30s 
Still got Pluto there in the first. Got Saturn in the fifth now. Jupiter in the tenth. So we've got Neptune in the third. That's more promising than when it was in the in the second because it's now in Aries and things being communicated possibly. Hmm. So that 2020 is significant. Now it doesn't really strike me as as um, particularly tumultuous or momentous. Let's go even further into the future, 2036, 37. We've got Pluto in the second. Okay, so Pluto goes into the second here. in March 2036. So something significant can really change in the way we operate here on planet Earth in March 2036. But again, can I can I really say that's when it's going to happen just based on that? Absolutely not. So you can see how this process works. It's by combining different energies and looking at what the potentials are Look, comparing it with different planets, looking at all the different angles, and then kind of allowing the intuition to come in and allowing the intuition to kind of say, okay, this is something that really resonates. And so it's kind of a science and an art because you're using your own intuition and the science of astrology here. But in this case, going back to this, of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven nor the sun, but the father alone. It's very unlikely that my intuition is going to offer up the information of when this is happening because no one's going to know this. So I can, I can tune in all I want. It's very unlikely that I'll get the answer. So let's see what happens. Um, 2020, whether this happens or not, something really significant is going to um, change in the way we operate as especially as human beings in a working sense and how we work here on planet earth and how we make things happen so whether we discover you know a, a renewable source of fuel or we discover a way of communicating with each other that is totally um, integrated so for instance you know in 2020 if they come up with a chip that we all get implanted with at birth that immediately and always connects us to the internet and we start communicating telepathically through this global internet or whatever it is something big like that is really going to shift the way we operate significantly that grand um, conjunction happened in 1981 and that's when computers and mobile phones and all of that came around and that really really fundamentally changed the way we communicated. So something big is happening in 2020. So no, I'm not making a prediction that the world is going to end and that Jesus is going to take over. Uh, but I am saying that something big, something big is likely to happen then. Yeah, I, I think I will make a separate video on that and see what the potential options are. But I hope this has given you an insight into how the charts work, what all of this looks like and um, the way kind of meaning is assigned to different things happening via the planets, the, the signs and the houses. Have Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful week. And I will speak to you here on the channel for the daily tarot readings that I do, the weekly horoscopes that I do, the monthly horoscopes for each sign of the zodiac, and all the other little videos that I do just like this video. Have a wonderful week and I'll speak to you soon.